So you're one of the few people in North Texas mm -hmm. who have uh, served in cross-racial, cross-cultural mm -hmm. appointments mm -hmm. more than once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, do you have anything you want to share about? Well, yes, I do. I, I have a letter. The letter was sent to the bishop, mm -hmm. and it stated that we have experienced this woman uh, for two weeks. And if we do not, we do not like the African American worship. And if you were going to kill our church, you just have by appointing her to mm -hmm. our church. Mm -hmm. After two weeks. After two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that was a little bit more than, you know, but I continue to do my work. Yes, you didn't quit. Yeah, didn't quit uh, because you realize that you're not serving the people, you're serving God first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and whatever you're doing for God, God will make a way to serve the, the church, the, the members, and the community. Mm -hmm. And that's how I had to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted the cross racial appointment, I wanted to have the experience. Mm -hmm. But I also had my mother in the ear that said, I don't think we need to do this. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> and uh, so that was just one of many examples that I had in a, in, in, in a cross-racial appointment. Um, and w what I learned was that I had to be the true me. I, I could not be anything else but the true me. And the true me loved the people. Mm -hmm. The true me went into the community and found out what it was that the ch community needed and what the community wanted, and I brought it back to the church. I really felt that I needed to give up what I, who I was mm -hmm. to be exactly what the church wanted me to be, mm -hmm. and I couldn't do that. 